Ah, piriformis. Kind of one of my other like favorite hip muscles, I think, because it's got a short origin and a short insertion, right? <laughs> Easy it. to memorize Love for it. testing purposes. So the origin is on the anterior surface of the sacrum, all right? Not the backside, but underneath the sacrum, all right, from the way you're looking at right now. And it's about between the area of the, um, like where your PSIS is, the posterior superior iliac spine, that little bump, that the bumps that are on the back of the, the low back. So it's, if you kind of picture be, be from there down to the tailbone, um, in the middle of that, that's going to be where the piriformis starts. And then it fans out and it goes out to the greater trochanter. And as you can see, the greater trochanter, we've mentioned before in the series, it's a pretty big bony landmark. So it's got a top, it's got a front, it's got a, it's got a posterior aspect and piriformis will come in and insert onto that more anterior or the top part of that greater trochanter. Now this, this piriformis is actually part of a, a whole family. They call this whole family the, the deep six external rotators of the hip. So um, some of the other ones that you saw on the slide there that Dr. Osar had shown that said, hey, if you wanna take a picture of this, do that. Um, when you look at like quadratus femoris and the gemellis and the um, uh, obturator externus, obturator internus, those are all part of this, this family. We're just pointing out piriformis because um, just don't have time to talk about the other five, but they're <laughs> there. And I'll kind of show you kind of generally what they do. They have general origins and a general uh, insertion. And one thing I'll just add, Jill, yeah. is the, the piriformis is almost like an intermediate muscle, right? Because you have the glute max and the glute medius, and then underneath that is the piriformis. And then yeah. underneath that is where you have like your gemella, your obturator. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yep. So, that's good, so good to point out. There's almost like three layers of external rotators. And obviously, as we've talked about, the deeper the layer, the more likely its job is to help to hold that femoral head in the acetabulum. Mm -hmm. so, so to really stabilize versus to do pure external rotation. Before you leave this slide, Dr. Osar, yeah, have yeah. you ever noticed that um, when you look at how on the backside, how like the sacrum lines up with the um, uh, iliums of the, the hip bones, yeah. that it kind of looks like an elephant and that the nose, the uh, trunk yeah. is the, uh, the, the, yeah. the, the, the tailbone. The tailbone yep. there. Oh, uh, yeah. That's kind of interesting. Coincidence? Yes. Prob probably yeah. not. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe we did not come from... You know, the, 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 the apes family. Maybe we came from, from elephants. <laughs> I'll take either okay. one. <laughs> All right. So when we look at the insertion being pulled closer to the origin, um, in, think about what it does is the uh, piriformis will do external rotation of the hip. So again, bringing that greater trochanter, rotating it in that transverse plane towards the sacrum, towards its origin, boom you get some external rotation. Um, and then at the pelvis, uh, as Dr. Osar said, it stabilizes the pelvis and the hip complex because you've got, again, the, the hip bones attaching it to that pelvis, thanks to those SI joints, um, helping to stabilize that whole area. And because it is an external rotator, ER, it is going to rotate to the exact opposite side. So it is another one of the muscles that will do pelvic rotation to the opposite side. So therefore your right piriformis will rotate your pelvis to the opposite side of right, which is left. Got it, awesome. Great job, let's, uh, let's show them what this looks like in George. Doo -doo -doo. Uh, piriformis, where'd you, oh here it is, fell off. Piriformis is going to go from the, let's show it on the front part here first, the anterior, all right, the anterior part, so you see that little red mark in there, all right, on the front or the anterior part of the sacrum, that's gonna be where uh, piriformis is gonna originate from. And then it comes out, I always say it comes out from hiding, all right, and it is going to go to, so I'll stick that tape under there, and it comes out and it goes to the tip or the, the top part of your greater trochanter. So if you see this little spot right here on your, yeah, about right here, Right, that blue spot, that's going to be where the insertion for piriformis will be. So I'm gonna put that from here. And remember I said kind of to eyeball where it's at. It doesn't really twist, but I gotta twist. I gotta twist it to get it stuck. All right, so that's the fiber direction. Um, PSIS, posterior superior iliac spine, 
tailbone, right about in between these two is where piriformis comes out from its origin to get to its insertion. Now remember, there's five other muscles that do, that are part of this family. The piriformis is part of the six, uh, the, 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 the deep lateral or deep external um, rotators of the hip. So by deep meaning gluteus maximus actually covers this whole family. Um, the other ones, like I said, gemelli and abtrator externus and abtrator externus and quadrate, uh, 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 quadratus um, femoris, those guys, they're general. What they do is they, they all insert on areas around or at this greater trochanter, and then they fan out. That's how I picture. They fan out, and they uh, are going to attach or originate to places, um, sacrum, like your piriformis, your sits bones, the ischial area, um, kind of just from here all the way out. That's how, that, that's how I picture the rest of the, the family of your, your deep um, external rotators. So here I'm releasing those external rotators of my left hip. Remember, I can't internally rotate. That means my external rotators on my left side are short and tight. I have to release those. I feel tightness in the front of my hip, but remember, where you feel tightness isn't where you need to release. We talked about that last time, I believe, or even the time before. Where you feel tight is rarely where you need to release. Remember, it's stretch. your stretch receptors are reacting. Stretch means they're on stretch. So my internal rotators are on stretch because my external rotators are short and tight. So I'm, doing my, I'm releasing my external rotators on my left side. And this is where most of your clients are not doing a great job releasing because, because frankly, they haven't been told to. So you're gonna tell them to. So again, align your TPC, that thoracopelvic cylinder over top the Rolga. So again, get your client not rolling like a rolling pin to be very specific. Hold an area of myofascial tension or, or trigger points. Don't just roll over it like a rolling pin. And this is brutally uncomfortable when you do it this way. Mm -hmm. Head and neck, thoracopelvic cylinder. Keep the pelvis square to the wall, then step back. Then keep your neck relaxed. Keep that pelvis square to the forward leg, then hinge. So again, as you're hinging, you should feel a stretch in the back, side, back of the front hip. So as you're hinging, the cylinder should be perfectly aligned through every repetition. If your client feels it in their back, it's because they're not hinging. They're just arching their back. So again, if you look at my TPC, it's aligned. My pelvis stays level to that forward, or should say squared to that forward leg. Maintain that alignment. Go slow so that motion is pure anterior rotation of that pelvis over top the femoral head. Like I said, the two most important patterns you can teach your client, bar none, Three-dimensional breathing and supported hip hinge. And this one, split stance hip hinge, is even more powerful than the bilateral version, if your client can do it. Again, we do two sets of three to five repetitions, focusing on slow, controlled hip hinging. 